So with my adventures into IR film photography and Aerochrome, I have been wanting to use it for more than just the odd roll of, and sometimes extremely rare, infrared film. And because of the issues with shooting infrared, it's time to go digital with infrared photography. So what is infrared photography? Simply put, it's using infrared light that we can't see to take a photo instead of using visible light. Now in analog terms, this means loading a film that has been sensitized to infrared light. And because the film is also sensitized to visible light, you have to use an IR filter to block the visible light so only the infrared light is recorded on the film, making an infrared photo. For digital photography, however, it's a little different. And that is because we can't just swap out the sensor for one that is infrared sensitive. But it turns out that the CMOS or CCD sensor in your camera is already infrared sensitive by default. In fact, it's really infrared sensitive to the point where the camera is more sensitive to non-visible light than visible light. Now, this is of course an issue for digital cameras because if you want to take a photo that looks normal to the eye, we don't want to record any infrared or ultraviolet light, so the camera has a special filter called an IR UV cut hot mirror filter right on front of the sensor to block all non-visible light. It stands to reason if we can remove that filter and replace it with one that passes IR and UV light, we can allow the camera to see the full spectrum it's capable of. In other words, this is called a full spectrum conversion. So why would anyone do a full spectrum conversion of a camera? Well, the main reason, alluded to earlier, is that it unlocks a lot more potential of the camera, allowing it to use the full capabilities of the sensor. And then we can use filters to photograph different ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum outside the visible range. So for example, if we have a full spectrum camera and we want to do infrared photography, we just take an IR filter that blocks visible light and that means the camera can only see infrared light. But you can actually take this and combine it with more interesting filters and multiple exposures to do things like taking digital color infrared photos, sort of like aerochrome. It's also very useful for astrophotography because a lot of the light from you know, galaxies and nebulae is emitted from hydrogen gas. If anyone knows much about physics or chemistry, you'll know about spectral emission. And hydrogen has a very strong emission at 656 nanometers, which is called the H alpha line. Now this line is in the very deep red and is mostly blocked by the hot mirror filter on normal cameras. But when you do a full spectrum conversion, it allows the camera to see this line much better. And this means you can do amazing astrophotography by making the camera more sensitive to the light that comes from space. So in order to do a full spectrum conversion, we need a camera to butcher. And for this, I have chosen the Nikon Z6 for a few reasons. It's a Nikon. You know my stance on Nikon, they're the best cameras ever made. It's actually a model that's a few years old and can be had for a good price secondhand, but it is still a great camera with all the bells and whistles you want. Now from teardowns online, it seems to be fairly easy to disassemble and get the filter out of. Some cameras like Sony's I've looked at are horrific on the inside and just look like an absolute nightmare to work on. Also, the Z mount is actually probably the most adaptable mount out there because it can adapt pretty much any lens now, within reason. There's also in-body clip-in filters available for the Z mount, which is actually really useful because then you put the filters behind the lens and you can use one filter for every lens you own. And lastly, it's a full frame mirrorless camera with phase detect autofocus. Now the reason this is so difficult on DSLRs is because the imaging, focus and viewfinder all use different optical paths in the camera and have to be calibrated perfectly to work together to create a sharp, in focus, properly exposed image. So if you modify the optical path to the sensor by changing the hot mirror filter, the focus will be thrown off. Also, the meter, which is another optical path, and the fact that the meter is generally not calibrated for non-visible light, because why would it be? So then the metering also gets thrown off and becomes more difficult. Also, the optical viewfinder is an issue, because if we use a filter on our lens to block visible light, like an infrared filter, then you can't see through the viewfinder, and thus we're kind of limited to tripods or other weird shooting techniques. However, 
all these issues are removed by using a mirrorless camera because in a mirrorless camera the metering focus and viewing is done through the sensor so if we modify the optical path to the sensor it is also modified for everything else so the focus will still be fairly accurate and the metering will also be accurate but it also allows us to use an EVF to see what the camera sees through any filters so this means we can like compose IR shots handheld and see beyond the visible spectrum to get a true preview of what our image looks like and this is super useful so if you want to do full spectrum you're going to need a mirrorless camera ideally a full frame mirrorless because full frame is awesome so in order to get your hands on a full spectrum camera there's two options one send it away and have someone else do it for you and you get your full spectrum camera back however that's kind of costly so i'm actually going to do the full spectrum conversion myself but to do that i'm going to need a few things first up i need a new filter for the sensor you know taking the glass off the sensor and leaving it exposed is just a really bad idea so for this conversion i bought a high quality quartz filter from Colari Vision. i'm also going to need a good toolkit i generally use the ifixit kits as they have all the screwdriver bits and prying tools i will need to get into this camera so with that let's get to it So that's the abbreviate version. I have a full length teardown and conversion in a second video. I'll be linking below in the description for people that want a more detailed look at how this is done. But now that we have the conversion done, we need some filters. And for this, I'm using Colari Vision's in-body Z-mount filters. These filters are actually pretty awesome. They're super easy to install into body using the included magnets that you glue in place using the jig provided. And now you can just attach the filter to these magnets and it sits behind the lens, which allows me to use any lens I want, including lenses that can't take normal filters, like the 16mm fisheye or the 200 to 500 lens I love that uses insane 95mm filters. Now the filters I have are a hot mirror filter, which converts the camera back to just being a normal camera, an IR720 filter for shooting infrared, and the IR Chrome Light, which is Colari Vision's digital aerochrome filter. And now that we have all of them, let's go shooting. Using this camera after its conversion is super fun. It's definitely not an everyday tool for sure, but it has its uses. I actually find the super high contrast look of IR works really well for like the harsh midday sun, 
and being able to do this digitally is pretty awesome. Now Colari's Aerochrome filter or the digital Aerochrome filter is something we have to look at in another video because there's a lot of information about it that I need to share but it is definitely a cool effect and I can see it being a really useful creative tool. Now I haven't actually used a camera for astrophotography yet um, but there is an in-body H Alpha Pass filter from Colari Vision that would help a lot with that and in case you're wondering a H Alpha Pass filter is basically a hot mirror filter but it extends the red sensitivity just a little bit so that H alpha line at 656 nanometers passes through very easily. So that's what allows us to see more into space. So overall, was it worth it? For me, I would actually say yes. Having a full spectrum camera is pretty fun and can unlock a lot of potential and creative options. But it is expensive, particularly if you get someone else to do it professionally. And if you DIY the conversion, you risk breaking the camera and at that point, you've basically no option but to open the wallet, start the car.